Well, so far we have conducted a lot of functional testing and understood a lot about unit integration and system. But there's always a level which is conducted in order to accept the product by the customer. Because it's always the customer who has provided you a certain set of requirements and would like to cross check if the requirement is met as per the expectation or not. So no matter what the level of executions and what type of executions you would have done, there will always a level called as acceptance testing before the customer can accept the product. So let's talk a little more about acceptance testing today. Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Neesh Kumar Singh and today we are talking about acceptance testing. When it comes to acceptance testing, this is the last level to be conducted in testing lifecycle in order to accept a piece of product. Generally, when the client gives you a certain set of requirements, when you talk about traditional approaches, it used to happen once at the end of the project where all the levels what you wanted to organize and conduct for a particular product will be done and post that we have acceptance testing which was mainly involving the customer and the team members in order to evaluate if the product really meets their expectation or not. So in simple terms we can define acceptance testing as a level of testing which is performed by the user in terms of like customer to accept the software and thus even acceptance testing was earlier known as user acceptance testing. So that was from the point of traditional approaches. But what happens in Agile? In Agile, we do follow that principle, but we write each and every user story with a particular acceptance criteria, which means to say that until unless these acceptance criteria are met, no matter what modifications, what development, what testing you would have done, if the acceptance criteria is not met, the product is not accepted. So we try to thrive in order to meet the expectations and also the acceptance criteria defined by user story. Not only that, by having a clear picture on acceptance criteria, the, de the development team of Agile will be very clear that what is that we should achieve in order to deliver this product at the end of the sprint. So that's one of the important things to be understood by acceptance testing. The second part of acceptance testing is the levels of acceptance testing. Here, we do not call it as types because when we say types of something, it means that you have a choice to conduct any one. When you say levels of something, it generally means that both has to be conducted or all have to be conducted and in a right sequence only. So yes, for acceptance testing, we have two levels of further acceptance testing. One is alpha and second is beta. So alpha and beta are two different levels of acceptance testing. To begin with, the very first level will be conducted as alpha testing. So let's talk a little more about alpha testing. Alpha testing is the very first level of acceptance testing and organized and conducted by the customer who is the owner of the product. So generally it is either conducted by the customer or its team who will be either on the payroll of the organization or probably a higher contract employees. So generally the consumer, for example, if the consumer is a bank, may not know all the technical prospects of an application in order to test it, evaluate it and accept the product. Thus, the banking organization will hire a third party organization to do alpha testing for the product. But yes, we have a clear set of requirements which were provided to you earlier, like a customer requirement specification. The same thing will be referred in order to prepare the test cases for it in order to test the application as a part of alpha testing. Also to add importantly, alpha testing always takes place at the developer place. That means where this particular product was being developed. So that's the most important thing to be remember that alpha testing happens at the developer's premises in the environment which is production and obviously involves customer and its representatives to test that application. Once alpha testing passes, the product is accepted by the application and the customer. The second part of it is beta testing, which is this level two of acceptance testing. Whereas now the client has accepted the product, the client will take it to a real environment where it is supposed to be deployed and ask the real users of the product to work on it and collect feedback. 
The major objective of beta testing is to give the real users the product and ask them how do they feel while interacting with the product. This is with the main intention to collect the feedback in order to understand if the end users are happy with what we have made in case they have anything else to add like you know some kind of functional issues or any kind of usability parameters all these can be very well reported to the customer and customer can look forward to it as a future requirement or maybe the updates and upgrades on the same release so yes beta testing is helpful in many manners so you ask the real users to work on it and it is happening on the client's premises that means the real world scenario additionally sometimes the uh, application may not be given to the end user directly why because it might be a banking application it might be a you know elevator of an application like for example if a building is deployed newly with an elevator you cannot ask their real users to take a ride it might be involving a life threat and also challenge a lot of other things so a lot of complications are involved then some cases where human lives are involved you do not give it to the real users but you ask the professional users to conduct beta testing on that and collect the feedback so that's how the acceptance testing is generally conducted in two different levels where alpha is conducted by the customer at developers premises and beta testing is conducted by end users in the real time environment or at customer's place another important thing is what kind of specifications or test basis we can use to derive the test cases for acceptance testing so generally it is the customer requirement specification risk analysis report the business requirements and all those parent documents which were which were shared by the customer in order to process your product the same will be used to derive the test cases for this and acceptance testing is just not limited to alpha testing or beta testing we also have lot of other things like contractual testing or uh, regulatory testing standards based testing or operational testing lot of sub levels which will take place as a part of acceptance testing so i think that was really interesting and good to explore about acceptance testing today if you had really good learnings do not forget to uh, stay tuned to this channel because we will be coming up with lot of such interesting facts and learnings in nutshell so that's all from this particular episode team so if you have anything else feel free to comment below i'll be there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning